In this new video, I'm going to show you the results that you see playing behind the scenes and also what I did to accomplish it. I'm going to be introducing you to a new tool which is called the Point Cache Bake Tool. This tool is going to allow us to create two different files. I'm going to create a point cache with a mesh and I'm also going to be creating a point cache with a texture. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. Today I'm really excited about this video because we're going to be using a new tool that I just found that is going to allow us to create what's called a point cache. And with a point cache, we can take something like this that is generating particles in random directions and also set the position and map it to either a texture or map it to a mesh. So in this case, I have two things that I want to do. I want to just kind of you know show you some of the effects that I have right now. And then we're going to be using the point cache tool to be able to add a couple of more effects. So this is some of the ones that I've been. So I'm just going to click through them and then you guys can download this as well, which is available in GitHub. This is a fire effect that I just had. There's also a collider in here and that's why the flames are going around. If I look at this one, this one is actually really cool. It just kind of looks like fire, red fire. And it has some turbulence on it, which is one of the nodes that I'm using. I also have one that is kind of like a space effect. So all these effects are stored in the visual effects folder. So you guys can look at that. Then this one is more of a sun effect. That was one of my first ones. This other one also has a sun effect, but it has a pure, pure, basically a little node in here. And I can never say that periodic total time that basically animates from, you know, from a higher number to a lower number. But, you know, this is the one that, that I'm talking about. And then lastly, I have a three dimensional example where I'm using one of the new nodes that Unity provides. So what I want to show you is the basically cloning one of these. And then we're going to be using, like I said, the point cache tool. So if we go here and grab, I think I'm just going to grab the fire effect that we have in here. And I'm going to be cloning that. And this is going to be with the point cache. So I'm just going to say with point, with point cache. And then we just double click it, make sure that that's the one that gets loaded. I'm also going to be adding that to the build settings just in case you guys want to build it. I haven't been doing that with any. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drag them all. Let me select this one through this one and then drag them and drop it. And now we should have all of them in there in the build settings. Okay, so now we have a point cache. And if I go into the point, the fire effect itself and go into the inspector, you're going to see that this is using the fire effect. So I don't want to modify the original, otherwise you guys cannot see the new one. So I'm just going to clone this one as well. And this one I'm just going to say with point cache. Point cache. And let's go ahead and double click it. And when I double click it, it should open up the craft on the left side here. And I'm not going to go through the graph. I, I done that in, in a playlist. So you guys can look at my playlist on VFX where I go into, you know, every single one, one of these nodes and we do a lot of experimentation. So what I'm going to do is now that I have it open, I also need to associate it with this object right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here and we're going to go ahead and select the fire effect with point cache. So now the graph should be using the visual effect should be using this one right here, which is the one that we're going to be, we're going to be modifying. So what I want to do is I want to use a mesh to basically have a skeleton. So we're going to be grabbing a skeleton. The skeleton that I have, I downloaded it free from the asset store. I'm also going to be putting the, the link to that in the description. So if we look at the prefab, it has actually, I'm going to just look at the model. We're going to be, let's go ahead and double click and go into the fire here. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the, the actual model here somewhere that is close to. And let me make sure that I have, I have 000. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the skeleton. I'm going to be a 000. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab the skeleton and we're going to be mapping the, basically the positions of the skeleton of the mesh. So the particles are going to be attached into the skeleton. So that's why you can use what's called a point, a, basically a point cache, because it's going to allow us to set the, basically the positions of the vertices on the mesh. That's what, that's what's going to be used to basically position the particles. I hope that makes sense. But what we'll do is we'll go here into window and then visual effects utilities and click on this point cache bake tool. And we're going to be, let's go ahead and drag it and drop it in here. That way we have some space to play with it. And what I'm going to do is this, there's a mesh associated with this component here. And if I click on it, in fact, then you can click, there's also a body. So if you look at this, there's a body, right? It has a skin mesh renderer. 
and there's a body mesh associated with it, which is actually the, you know, where the mesh is. So what I'm gonna do to create a point cache, I'm going to go here and make sure that I have mesh selected. You also have the option of doing texture. I'm gonna show you that, how to do that in just a second. But for now, let's just concentrate on mesh. I'm gonna click in here. And we're gonna be looking for our skeleton, and you can see that we have a body skeleton in here. And if I double click on it, now we have associated our point cache tool with that body. You also have some other options in here if you wanna export the colors, if you want to export the UVs, let's say that these have UVs and then also colors, then you can do that. You can also tell it, you know, what the point count is gonna be. So what I, what I did before is I just left everything default, that work. And you guys obviously can experiment with it if you wanna do, you know, more advanced things. I'm also going to be creating in here, let's create a new folder and I'm gonna call it point, let's call it coin point caches. That way I can store all of these files that this is gonna generate into that directory. I'm gonna click on save and then we're gonna go into that directory. And this one I'm just gonna call it a skeleton. Let's go ahead and put it in there. You can see that it creates this really cool icon which has basically the data that it needs to, to map or graph to the mesh that we have, basically to the cache tool that we have created based on the mesh. I keep making myself confused by trying to explain it, but hopefully it makes sense. And then now if we go into our graph, all we really need to do here is, I don't really need this, to be honest, because I'm gonna be doing a lot, a lot of different things. And then we can leave the quad output as it is. I don't need to comfort to anything. So this is gonna go crazy. I don't need turbulence. I also don't need a field, a ve vector field force. So it's gonna look weird just, just for a few seconds. And then what I need to do here is I'm gonna go into what's called the create node. And then I'm gonna search for point. And you're gonna see that this gives you a point. You can do a point cache. I think that's the one that I did before. Actually, it's gonna be the other one. Let's go ahead and do point. And there's gonna be that one. Let me do, I only done this a couple of times. So let's see, that one was a point output. We need the point cache. Okay, I think it's just a point cache. I don't think we need, we need to do this one. Let me do that one more time. Point and let's see, it's gonna be the point cache. Awesome. So now let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Now we're gonna be associated on this file with that. Oh, there we go. So the, the reason why I was confused is because I wasn't, I didn't see these three values which we're gonna need and at least one of them because we need to set the position. So that's what we need. We're gonna, we now have a position count which came from this file. We also have the position which came from the mesh and this file actually is mapping to that information. And also if you had normals and you wanted to map normals, you can also do that. So now that we have that, we have the information that we need, but we need to map it to the, basically the particles. So what we need to do is we need to right click in here and I'm gonna search for, actually you're gonna search for map. And if we search for a map, we're gonna see something that is called set position for map. There we go. And so far this is just weird, right? It just doesn't, doesn't work quite well. And the reason for that is because this is just in the noise. It just doesn't know the position yet. So I'm gonna drag and drop the, the attribute map. And now you can see that it's it's kind of looking okay, but we're gonna be changing some of these values. I think the value that I need to change is gonna be, it's probably gonna be the value scale, so we can do that. And the other thing that I wanna do, there we go. So it's kind of looking okay, not quite well just yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on the scene view. And let me change this back to one, actually it was okay how we had it. The reason why this looks different than this is because this is being basically animated where this is, there's a basically it's being rigged and it's being positioned where the mesh that we have, it has the, the mesh. So that actually looks okay. That's what I was looking for. The, the reason why it's shaking like that, that's what I want to check and see. And I think that's because of those, some of these values that I have here on the lifetime. You're going to see that that is setting. This, let me go ahead and uncheck it. And it is doing a little bit of a shaking and I think it, it has to do with a lot of the velocity. We change the velocity, there we go, so that. So I am changing some random velocity, so you can play with these settings. To be honest, these don't need to be 100% right, but I'm going from a negative number to a positive number, so you could just go and keep it positive all the way. I can also do that here. And I believe if I do that here as well, that should look a little bit better. If not, you can just disable the velocity and not do a random velocity. 
And if that's what you want, which actually looks really cool, then we can we can just go ahead and do that. So that kind of shows you how we can map it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the skeleton. We don't need the skeleton anymore. And let me see if I can add a little bit of variety to this so that it doesn't look as, you know, as boring like that. Let me see if I can add, and I haven't done this. I'm completely, you know, guessing on how this. I'm going to just add uh, turbulence force. Let me see if that, there we go. So that gives it a, a little bit of a, a change, but I don't want to give it too much change. And we can do maybe something like that. And you can play with some of the frequencies. Kind of see how that now is changing the, maybe the intensity needs to be a little bit less. And a lot of times I just go in and change, you know, change some of these values just to see what looks better. But that, that looks a little bit weird, right? <laughs> but that gives you an idea. So let me go ahead and remove this. I don't think I want this node. And this is how you can map to a mesh. That's basically what I wanted to do to wanted to do in this video. So if you wanted to do maybe more particle counts, like maybe that's not enough, you can always, you know, increment the particle count here, or maybe you want to go a lower number. So we can do something like, I think that is what, that is 100,000. I think 100,000 still looks good. And if I want to go to a lower rate, you can also look, go to a lower rate. You're going to see that kind of looks better because now we can see the particles are spawning. But if you want to go, you know, higher number, so it's more, you know, vivid. And you can also change the colors in here. The reason why that looks like that color is because of the gradients that I'm using in here. So if you wanted to use a different color, of course, you can go here and then just change. You know, if you wanted some different color, you can, you know, change this graph. So I'm not going to change that. Or you can change this one. I think if I change this one, it's going to be more, it's going to, there we go. That, that looks a little bit better. And it looks different, right? Because I'm changing and mapping these two different colors. We can go ahead and save it. And we can also, I think I can also go here and do a default instead of a gradient. Kind of see how that is now using this color. And if you wanted to do something like that, then, you know, that now changes the color. So there's a lot of possibilities of what you can do. It just all depends on, you know, what kind of effect you're looking for. And also, if you want to change, like if you want to change the particle size, maybe you want this to be a lower number, maybe a higher number, which doesn't look okay. So I'm just going to leave it as what I had. So that shows you how to map, you know, the actual graph to a mesh. So what if you wanted to do a texture, right? We may want to, you know, display Unity maybe right here because we have another graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, let's leave this one as it is. And then let's create a new one, right? And go into my project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone also this scene. I'm going to go ahead and go here into details. And this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. We can say point cache skeleton. And then yes, let's go ahead and reload it. That's fine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and clone this. And then this is going to be with Unity logo. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click it. It's going to open this one. That's fine. I'm just going to be changing some of the effects. So I'm going to go into this effect right here and I'm going to clone it as well. But in this case, I'm going to use a texture. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this one to, let's just match the names, Unity logo. And then this one is going to be the skeleton. So make sure that everything is named correctly so you don't get confused. And then now we can double click on this one. I'm going to also go into my fire effect here and associate that new effect to be, you know, the Unity logo one that we just, we just created. And let me make sure that the other thing is, is still intact so that you guys can also run it. And yeah, it looks like this is fine. So I'm going to go back into Unity logo and then let's click in here. Make sure this one is assigned correctly. It looks like it's assigned correctly and that's the one that we have open if I hover over this. Okay, so it looks like we're okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my point cache tool here and I'm going to do a texture. And let's go into project first and then let's look at textures. And I have a texture in here. If I double click it, it's just going to be the Unity logo. So a couple of things that you need to do on that, on that texture is the first thing that I need to do is I need to tell Unity that this, this is going to have an alpha transparency. So if I do that and then I hit apply, you're going to see that it now knows about the transparency. You also need to tell Unity that this is going to be a read and write. And the reason for that is because the point cache needs to read from it. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to hit apply. So now we should be okay. Let's go ahead and go into our point cache tool here. 
And well, we have the texture assigned, and I'm going to click on and associate my, my new Unity texture. So a couple of things in here that are really important is make sure that you get the size correctly. Otherwise, I think if you, I did this in a Mac, and Mac was for some reason assigning this to 1024 by 1024. I'm now in Windows, and Windows is detecting the, the texture size, so that is correct. So I think we're OK. And also, if you want to export the colors of the texture, you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and save it into our folder that we create for point caches. And this one, I'm going to call it Unity Logo. And we should be OK if we go back into the project. And then you look at the point cache. Sometimes you need to just give it a second until it loads. And let's just give it a second here. See, I get this error. I don't know why, but that's OK. And sometimes it doesn't load automatically. So what I need to do is go into the folder itself, make sure that it is, it got added, and then go back into Unity and Unity adds it. So if you have that issue, just open a folder, go back into Unity, and Unity can reload it. OK, so now what I need to do in this case is I don't want to map to the mesh anymore. So what I'm going to map is I'm going to map to my new Unity logo, right? So now we can see the Unity logo. And the Unity logo looks OK, right? It doesn't, it's not 100% accurate. Because it's a little bit, it's, it's basically scaled down a tiny bit. So what, I, what I'm going to do for that is if we go into the value scale here, and I change the value of the x value, which is where it was scaling, now it looks great. Now we have you know, our points just mapping correctly. And it's really cool when you get close. You, know, you can do some, some really cool animations with this. And you, know, you can change the color as, you know, as I show you. Maybe on this one we can change the color a tiny bit. Maybe let's do, I don't know, we can we can do a blue here. Perhaps this one as well. It's going to be more of a blue color. And I think I need to change one more point in order for this to kind of look a little bluish, maybe, if that is even a word. If it doesn't work, then I think it's still this one. There we go. It's, it's taking precedence on the first one for some reason. You know what? I'm going to go to more of a white color there. And then, because when I do a blue, it just doesn't really look OK. The other thing that we can do is we can just set default color here and then just use this one to, to specify the color. And there we go. And for some reason, I like the other one better. I think, I think that one looks cool. Just wanted to have some emission so that we can see that. And OK, let me go ahead and align my camera to look at that specifically. We can go back into the game view. There we go. Let's go a little bit closer. And I think, let me look at that. There we go. And if I hit maximize on play, then we should be able to see the entire, the entire Unity logo. And there we go. I think it looks, it looks really cool. So let me go ahead and make sure the camera is also set up correctly on the other scene that we just added. Yeah, the camera is all screwed up. So let me make sure that this looks fine. So when you guys see it, it just looks really cool. Um, I'm always like, you know, into looks. I like things to look good. So yeah, so there we go. And let me go back in here, maximize on play. And let me make sure, okay, I think we're cutting the skeleton head off a little bit. So let me fix that. And I think what I need to do, I think the camera is too close. Let's go back a little bit more. Align my camera here, and then hit play. And then let's go ahead and move the camera up a tiny bit more. And then I think I'll call it. I'll call it. Good. Let's see where is my camera? Let's move it up a little bit. Now let's go into here. Hit play. And if everything looks good, I'm going to. I think that looks decent. I think if I move the camera just a tiny bit up, and let's go ahead and. Go back into scene mode, and we can do so. If I if I enable my gizmos, I, I think it would have been a lot easier. And we can probably just make my my gizmos are just way too big, and this is recompiling. And let's give it a second here. There we go. It's gonna make these gizmos just a tiny bit smaller. Go back into my camera and resize it a tiny bit more. He maximize, and I think this is going to be. A successful video so i'm gonna call it good guys if you guys have any questions about anything that i just show you please let me know in the comments thank you
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out LearnExcel.io where I'm basically doing VR training and I'm also going to be doing upcoming augmented reality training. If you guys have additional questions about anything, again, please let me know. And be sure to check out Patreon.com where I'm basically doing early access to source code and also what I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much, guys.